the scripture it says Jael lifted up her hand in one blow the nail went through the temple and into the wood how could an ordinary housewife who is used to cooking <laughs> washing clothes looking after kids have such a great power it came from the holy ghost the lord most high god's power came upon her and empowered her hands with one blow it went through this is the same power that came upon david with one swing the stone did not just hit him it went inside his head how is it physically possible you do the math you do the physics i did it you know it is impossible in the natural impossible if not for spiritual help spiritual help see that is why the last days prophetic company must become spiritually sensitive to the spiritual realm because you need to work together with them in the last days you need to cooperate with them you need to hear what they say and work together with their strategies when you listen to their strategies and you work together then they will stand by your side when jael lifted up her hand the angel held her hand and when she brought down it was a force of the angel that struck down you know last year pastor josephine and i we were going to houston for a meeting so we we were waiting at los angeles airport and for our flight to be called you know to to board the plane while we were standing there i suddenly felt the presence of someone standing by my side and i turned to see a huge angel standing by my side and he had a long sledge hammer in his right hand and he said i am the angel of this city los angeles and then i saw this huge sledge hammer in his hand and he said i am going to strike this city and a massive earthquake is going to destroy this city and i saw this huge sledge hammer and when he spoke to me he said at the same time three places are marked in this nation which are going to be hit by massive great earthquakes and when he spoke that i saw groups of angels all with sledge hammers position in the three region of the us see earthquakes happen not because the tectonic plates are moving that may be the scientist answer but earthquakes happen because the angels are striking they are striking sometimes they just stamp their feet on the ground all there are many many scriptural proofs for all that they stamp the ground sometimes the angels horses they lift up their feet and they stamp on the ground and that causes the earth to move then comes the science to say oh the tectonic plate moves but how does a tectonic plate move what causes the movement there must be an answer right ah nobody answers that question they said moves okay what caused the movement then they comes up with another answer because of the pressure that's building up what caused the pressure to build up <laughs> right see you go down to the ultimate root cause the root cause is the judgments of god so it was the angel who held the hand and brought it down similarly was what happened to goliath when david swing it was the angel that caused the stone to move with such a great force that it went right into his forehead breaking his bones and into his head so god gave the spoils to the housewives psalms 68 was 12 How many housewives are here? You can claim Psalm 68:12 for you. Psalm 68:12 
is for the housewives. It says there, God gives the spoils to the housewives, to those who are at home. So all those housewives, you are not just a housewife. You are a sleeping terrorist. Okay, good place to clap. Go ahead, clap. You know, I tell you, there are two kinds of terrorists. Have you heard of a sleeping terrorist? No? Okay. A sleeping terrorist is a terrorist, but in waiting. They have all the trainings and all the weapons of a terrorist, but they are waiting for their call. Recently, there was a case in India, I think two years ago. A man, a young man, about 24, 27 years old, who was a very kind-hearted, humble man, brilliant computer scientist, computer engineer, I think. When the police inquired about him from all the neighbors, they said, you would have never met such a fine gentleman like this young man. But he was the one who planted large amount of bomb in a certain place in India and blew up buildings. So how could a, such a fine, kind-hearted gentleman suddenly do all that? It was not a sudden thing. These are what the terrorists call a sleeping terrorist. They had all the trainings of the terrorists, but they were told to wait for the call. So till then, they are just like an ordinary person. Ordinary person going about all their mundane duties, but one day the call comes and they'll say, the call just say, you are activated. That's the code word, activated. And then they, will, they know what to do. Sleeping terrorists. So similarly, if the devil can have sleeping terrorists, God also has his sleeping terrorists, who are the housewives? Amen. All the housewives who are here, and all the housewives who are hearing me, remember Psalms 68 12. It says, God gives the spoils to the housewives. And the housewife's role model is Jael. Jael is your role model. Simple housewife. But Sisera came to her house hoping that she will give him refuge, which she did. She was an excellent hostess. She gave him a place to sleep. She gave him drink. She, gave him, she cooked him a nice meal. And she even gave him a blanket to cover himself so that no one else will find him. He covered his whole body and he was sleeping. So when he was deeply snoring, Jael tiptoed and killed him. Ordinary housewife. Ordinary housewife. That honor should have gone to Barak. Barak missed the call. So here is a warning. If God calls you, immediately answer. If you hesitate, it will go to somebody else. There is no more time to wait any longer. You know, if God calls you, no matter how hard it may be, the, the God who calls you will equip you to do the job. You cannot say, Lord, I am an unlearned person. Don't be suddenly very spiritual like Moses. Lord, I don't know how to speak. I stammer. You know, we all try to be very spiritual and quote the scriptures. No, this, see, what applied to Moses does not apply to us. Moses really stammered. But you are not stammering. We just pretend to stammer. Just humble yourselves. Like what Mary did. She humbled herself and she said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord. Be it unto me according to all the word of God. 
that should be your position humble submission to the call of god humble submission to the will of god you know when god called me to do television ministry i was the most least qualified and the most good for nothing person that god picked to do that work i am not an engineer by training i don't know nothing about television engineering the only television ministry i know is to sit down and watch tv <laughs> by that we all are involved in television ministry right you we all have a remote control in our hand and then we just surf the channels one after another and watch something on the tv that's all i did but when god called me i hesitated i said no lord you pick the wrong person how can god pick the wrong person right i hesitated you know for one and a half years i rejected that call she i was been rebellious but been a good rebellion because i honestly don't know anything about television i honestly don't know you know so i said no lord and i i dropped the call but the lord pulled me by the ear have you been there he pulled me by the ear through some circumstances and he locked me on my right and my left on my friend on my back i couldn't move anywhere until i said yes lord okay when i said yes still i did not know how to do it so i fasted for 40 days three times in 2002 fasted for 40 days and i prayed and asked the lord okay lord now please teach me how to do this work and then the lord poured an anointing upon me when the anointing was poured when i look at this professional video equipments i just know how to operate them just know how it works the technical the engineering of it eventually to set up an entire television studio i just knew how to do it and yesterday we made history this conference we took a web link from shakaina and i sent it to my studio in india i called my engineer we woke him up at 12 midnight yesterday it was midnight in india you know i woke him up i said look you are going to do this conference live on our network so i sent him the link and they tested the link and half an hour later he called me back he said we are live now wait 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 <laughs> i should have a plug card <laughs> wait wait the best is yet to come so 2 hours later he called he texted me and said we are live on all 12 channels covering the whole world this was a first in our history a first and that honor goes to the woman you see more than any other conferences is this is a women's conference that was televised around the whole world on all our 12 channels everybody from one end of the world to another end of the world is watching you right now so you better don't sleep you better put on your best front because everybody is watching you see how was this possible the grace of god yes. that equips you when you say yes lord all you have to do is just say yes lord i don't know how to do it but here i am i make myself available yes lord once you do that then listen to what gabriel told mary the power of the most high god will come upon you that's what it will happen the power of the most high the anointing will come upon you and equip you 
and the anointing will teach you how to do it you know whenever we face some serious crisis in our studio all my staffs they would just fast and pray you know once we bought an equipment a very professional equipment it was like the heart of our whole studio the equipment was bought from england and it broke down when we called the manufacturer in england the founder who created that product did not know how to solve the problem he said in our entire history we never had this problem and we don't know how to do he said and without that all our programs could not go on the air so my engineer he fasted for 3 days he said you see when when the the creator does not know what to do to whom else will you ask right no no i mean human creator <laughs> human creator so he fasted for 3 days on the third day god showed him a dream how to solve the problem so early in the morning he came to the studio and he did exactly like how god showed him the dream and the equipment worked see when the founder of the equipment doesn't know how to solve the problem but the real creator who knows everything gave us a solution see the anointing will teach you amen i'm sorry i'm taking too much of a time i just add into pastor sweets time said okay yes all right so barak means his high call now she was a judge over israel like moses she was a prophet and a judge and as a judge she was responsible for resolving disputes conflicts she makes decisions and gives people the word of the lord and that's exactly what moses was doing we read that in exodus chapter 18 verses 13 to 16 so that will be one of the job that you will be called to do you will become like a mother people will look up to you as a mother a mother comforts people right a mother consoles a mother encourages that's what a mother is so god lifts you up as a mother and she was called a mother of israel judges chapter 5 verse 7 she not only provided military and political security for the whole of israel but she was also a very very caring compassionate person now so the last days debora anointed woman must be a caring and compassionate and shepherd like person you must have that heart so that you can become a mother the fourth thing that we hear we read about debora is she was a warrior and as a warrior she was responsible for leading the army of israel judges chapter 5 verse 13 tells us that you know when general barak was afraid of leading the army of god debora was bold to take on the canaanite army single handedly she put on her armor and she went before the army to lead the army we read that in judges chapter 4 verses 9 to 10 and being a prophetic warrior the bible tells us in judges chapter 4 verse 6 she would receive military strategies battle plans from the lord how to conduct a war you know this is another thing when you have this anointing god will give you battle strategies for spiritual warfare see not all demons are the same in every city the demons over this city will not be the demons over houston or anywhere else so you need to get battle strategies from god 
you know many times today people make one common mistake they follow some patterns in the bible and they go around duplicating the same method all over the world like prayer walks or prophetic acts what do you read in the bible god gave those specific instructions to those people doing this if god gives you the specific instruction to do that's okay but you you cannot say i am doing by faith a prophetic act wrong it will not work you know when there was a problem in israel elisha took salt and threw into the water and it changed a poisonous water into drinkable water and so people take salt and they go around throwing salt into all the waters and the waters still are salty <laughs> they don't change to sweet waters but if god says do it then when you act upon the prophetic word it will work miracles so you don't duplicate a method a pattern but you wait on god and god will give you a strategy a battle strategy what you should do to take on the enemy in your city in your nation over your church over your families and she was a fearless warrior and she worked together with the heavenly army judges chapter 4 verse 15 chapter 5 verse 22 to 23 now i would like you to turn your bibles to judges chapter 4 and we will read verse 15 i'm going to show you three scriptures and we are going to see from the scriptures how debora worked together with the heavenly army chapter 4 verse 15 and the lord routed sisera and all his chariots and all his army with the edge of the sword before barak and sisera alighted from his chariot and fled away on foot now look at the first word the lord routed underline that the lord routed now turn to chapter 5 and we'll read verses 20 22 and 23 they fought from the heavens the stars from their courses fought against sisera now here is a battle on the earth so what does it mean now they fought from the heavens the stars from their courses fought against sisera now who are these stars in revelation chapter 1 verse 20 the lord jesus christ explained the stars signify angels So when Deborah received a word from God and set forth to battle the angelic army worked together with Deborah that's why the scripture says and the Lord routed how does the Lord routes through his angelic army they were sent forth to put to flight Sisera now look at verse 22 then the horses hoofs pounded the galloping galloping of his steeds now what is this horses in revelation chapter 19 verse 14 it says heaven's armies come riding on horses so the angels come on the horses remember i told you earlier the horses will lift up their feet and they pounce on the ground now you have a scripture for that the horses comes galloping and they lift up their hoofs and their legs and they pound on the ground you know with the, with this call that i have on my life to raise up a youth army and the children army one day the lord taught me about the various weapons in the spiritual arsenal and then he said you know the horses in heaven the hoofs when the horse in heaven when he strikes rubs its hoof on the ground it is a weapon I said how is it possible lord you know in my natural mind I couldn't understand how it was possible this was even before I read this scripture I knew about this scripture in the bible and I saw in a vision the horses you know they will move their hoofs and when it did the the dust rose up and it formed a hurricane it formed a terrible sandstorm and came against the enemies of god I saw that 
But I, you know, I, when I see something, I believe. But before I teach them publicly, I must have some scriptural proof. So then I found the scripture. The horse's hoofs pounded. The galloping, the galloping of his steeds. That's the heavenly army. And verse 23. Curse Maros, said the angel of the Lord. Curse its inhabitants bitterly, because they did not come to the help of the Lord the help of the Lord against the mighty here you see an angel of the Lord involved in the fight against Sisera so the last days Deborah company you must be so spiritually sensitive that you are aware of angels around you the angelic hosts and you need to learn to work together with them because they, you can do the job alone. Can you? You cannot because you are not fighting against flesh and blood. If you are fighting against flesh and blood, all of us can team up together. Can't we? But you are not fighting against flesh and blood. You are fighting against an enemy whom you can't see. You cannot see. So how are you going to fight? Now we need heaven's help. So you do your part and they do their part. So we need to work together then there can be great victory. Amen? Amen? So besides that, we also read in Judges chapter 5, verse 21 and 22, that Deborah commanded nature to defeat Sisera's army. We read there in the, in the two scriptures that God sent heavy cloud bursts. So there was suddenly a thunderstorm. In a bright day, bright sunny day, suddenly there arose a thunderstorm and there were lightnings and thunders and clappings of thunders that were very, very deafening and frightening. And the river Kishon, it rose and overflowed the plain. Now this is similar to what you read in Joshua chapter 10, verse 11 and 12 when Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand. Right? They stood. Now that's, that phenomena has been proven by NASA that it truly happened. Proven by NASA. So, sun stood and the moon stood. So the nature can be commanded by a single woman. Single woman. A single woman warrior. Next time, when you look at the mirror and you spend three hours doing all the makeup, <laughs> before you do all the makeup and all the painting, first look at yourself and you say, This face is a warrior. Do you remember the clip that uh, Lou Ingalls showed the other day? Yes. See? Yes. Don't forget that clip. Okay. It was a woman that God used in that to kill the enemy. No men were there. A woman. It was a woman, Jael, that killed Sisera. A woman. And it was a woman who led the Israeli army, Deborah, a woman. So all you wonderful women here, you are not ordinary. You are terrible. <laughs> Good terrible. Amen. Good terrible. But... Don't be a bad terrible and say, God told me to be terrible. You are a good terrible. You are terrible to the devil. Amen. So, in his list, you are a terrorist. Amen. So, what does all this tell us? The last days 
Deborah anointed woman will rise up as mighty warriors who will put the enemy to flight. Secondly, the last days Deborah anointed woman will train their young to war. Several years ago, a 15-year-old Palestinian boy tied bombs around his waist, walked into a busy Jerusalem area and blew, blew himself up and killing several Jewish people. So a reporter from BBC came to do an interview about these uh, suicide bombers. So they went to this home of this particular boy to interview the mother how she felt. It must be terrible for the mother to lose her only son. She did not have many sons. And when the reporter came, she, they found the woman sitting in one corner and she was crying and crying and crying. So the reporter, a man, was so saddened by, to see the tears of the woman. So he went near her, sat beside her with a microphone or tape recorder, was going to interview her. And the first question he asked is, Mother, are you feeling so sad that your only son had died? And the woman was still sobbing and she wiped her tears and she said, I'm not crying because my only son died. I'm crying because I did not have more sons. I did not have more sons whom I can send as suicide bombers. And the journalist was shocked at what he was hearing. And uh, he then asked her another question. You know, something about suicide bombers. It is something for you to go and plant a bomb somewhere and then you press the trigger. But when you have the bombs all around you and you have the trigger in your own hand, you know how much of great guts it takes to press the trigger because the trigger is not in somebody's hand it's in your own hands what great guts great boldness it takes to press the trigger so the mother said so the journalist asked how is it that your son could blow himself up as a terrorist how could he do that so the mother said from the day that he was born I whispered into his ears, a Jew is a dog and it is your great honor to kill a Jew. From every of their waking moment, when she's breastfeeding the baby, when she's bathing the baby, when she's putting the baby to sleep, she speaks the word over and over. Every day, the mother speaks the word. So the word goes into his ears. It's a great honor for you to kill a Jew. And you're doing Allah great service by killing. So the boy from the day he was born, from zero age, right up to 15 years of age, day and night, they're hearing the same word. It's a great honor, great honor, great honor. So it goes into their entire consciousness that it's a great honor to sacrifice their life for their cause. Now when I read that, I thought to myself, how many Christian mothers are teaching their children it's a great honor to die as a martyr for the Lord Jesus? How many? We are only training our children to be great in society, have a great education, have a great job, earn a lot of money, be successful. Just like what we heard, dream your dreams. No matter how lustful it may be, no matter how selfish it may be, no matter how self-centered it may be, pursue your dream. Self-centeredness, right? That's what we are training our little ones to go. You know, in the Indian family, every Indian parent would want their son or their daughter to become a doctor, engineer or lawyer. That's the most prestigious thing for them. And that's how they would dream 
their children to grow up to become a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer and they feel so proud when their children become like that but how many you know these palestinians terrorists they are giving their lives for a no cause their promise of instant entrance into paradise which is not true right they don't go to paradise they end up in hell for an unrighteous cause they can surrender their lives how much more for a righteous cause how much more are we training our children in that way you know when my nephews were born nephews and nieces i told my sisters two sisters and my brother I said don't train your children don't aspire your children to be successful in the world train them all for the service of god train them and i tell my nephews and nieces this every day you are born to serve the lord and two of them are now in full time ministry so we guide our children to their eternal destiny what is their destiny i'm sorry pastor sweet i have rocked your time just few more minutes so the last days debora anointed woman must train their young to war to war with the devil in this last days finally debora was a worshipper she worshiped before going for war psalm 68 verse 25 it says here the singers went before the players on instruments followed after among them were the maidens playing timbrels see the singers went before the musicians went before and the maidens all the women they took up the tambourine in their hands and they were dancing and singing before the choir and the army followed after behind like miriam who sang under the holy spirit's inspiration praises to god were also sung by debora for victory you read that in judges chapter 5 that after the great victory god gave her she began to sing a prophetic song unto god so what does this tells us the last days debora company must learn war cry songs of the lord you must learn that now where are you going to learn only from heaven psalm 68 verse 1 and 2 let god arise let his enemies be scattered let those who also who hate him hate him flee before him as smoke is driven away so drive them away as wax melts before the fire so let the wicked perish at the presence of god so this is your second destiny the debora anointing amen let's all stand up for a word of prayer so since we all are fasting you can stay here the whole afternoon right yes. right everybody yes. so that's why pastor sweet is now ready <laughs> to take you to the next level to meet with god come on lift up your holy hands then sings my soul my savior god to the how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my